Good morning. My name is Burke Gall and I'm a senior attorney with the Institute for Justice. We're a national legal organi organization that, whose mission is to restore constitutional limits to government. We are here today to announce the filing of a major First Amendment lawsuit challenging Florida's campaign finance laws. Laws that make it downright difficult and, and sometimes impossible to speak about the most important political issues of the day. And this keeps ordinary Floridians from speaking about many things, including statewide, ba statewide ballot issues, which brings us to the case that we're filing today. Today's case is part of a larger campaign by the Institute for Justice called the Citizen Speech Campaign. It is a new national campaign in which we will be challenging campaign finance laws across the country in order to protect Americans' First Amendment rights and really illustrating to people the real harm to free speech that campaign finance laws cause. Uh, as part of this campaign, we are not only filing today's lawsuit, but we are also calling upon the officials in over 20 states to bring their laws into compliance with the Supreme Court's recent decision in Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission. In that case, the Supreme Court made crystal clear that government may not require groups of citizens to become heavily regulated political committees in order to simply speak about politics. And that's a principle we seek to vindicate here. In addition, today we're also releasing a major research report by Def Dr. Jeffrey Milo, an economist at the University of Missouri, in which he describes the importance of political entrepreneurship to the operation of our democracy and explains how state campaign finance laws are stifling grassroots democracy all across the country. Um, so with that, I would like to turn the microphone over to Paul Sherman, my colleague at the Institute for Justice. Paul is the lead attorney in our challenge to the Florida law. He'll, he'll talk some more about the specifics of this lawsuit, and then he'll introduce you to our clients. Paul? Thank you, Thank you Bert. In America, the only thing you should need in order to talk about politics is an opinion. But unfortunately, in Florida and states across the country, ordinary Americans are finding their rights to speak and associate stifled by burdensome campaign finance laws. These laws have, over the last 35 years, grown to regulate far more than just money given to political candidates. Today, driven by politicians and political insiders, they sweep up even grassroots groups of citizens that want to do nothing more than talk about the political issues that matter to them. In just a moment, I'll be introducing you to our clients who want to run a simple radio ad urging the public to vote against proposed Amendment 4 to the Florida Constitution. Their speech is of the sort that the Supreme Court has made crystal clear is fully protected by the First Amendment. Unfortunately, if our clients go forward with their plan, they will be subject to a host of burdensome regulations. They will have to register with the state. They will have to open a separate bank account. They'll have to keep meticulous financial records. In short, they will have to deal with the same sorts of regulations that political candidates hire lawyers and accountants to deal with. Indeed, these laws are so onerous that earlier this year, the United States Supreme Court held that they are unconstitutionally burdensome even for corporations and unions. Well, laws that are unconstitutionally burdensome for General Motors and the AFL-CIO are unconstitutionally burdensome for ordinary Americans. That's why today the Institute for Justice is joining with Nathan Worley, John Scalaro, Pat Wayman, and Robin Stublin to file this First Amendment lawsuit to strike down Florida's unconstitutional campaign finance laws. We filed our complaint yesterday afternoon, and soon we will be filing a motion for preliminary injunction urging the federal court to freeze the operation of these laws so that our clients can speak out in time for the 2010 election. Now I'd like to turn the microphone over to IJ client Nathan Worley, who's going to talk a little bit about why he and his friends oppose Amendment 4, what they want to do, and how the campaign finance laws have prevented them from doing that. Nathan? My name is Nathan Worley. I was born and raised in Florida. Uh, I know that this will severely impact the uh, Florida economy. I work in the construction industry. I know that it will also impact a lot of jobs, uh, people that I know. I would don't believe that our community has the uh, full view of what Amendment 4 is about and where we started was to get together and try to figure out the most effective way to, uh, to get that across and we figured out it would be a radio ad. Um, and in conference calling and talking, uh, somebody picked up on that and made us aware that we were fixing to break a law. And uh, 
thankful for uh, Institute for Justice that they've been able to let us know about that and what we were getting into, but it's a, uh, it's a pretty complex issue. And uh, they can tell you more about the complexity of it, but it's not just a simple go down and, and get together, put some money together, and get a radio ad and get your point across. So I'll turn it back over to Paul. Thank you, Nathan. Now we're happy to open this up to questions. We can handle them from here. If you guys want to break up and talk one-on-one, -on -one, we can do that too. Well, for, for your first question, the First Amendment protects the right of individuals to speak and think for themselves. And our client's political message has nothing to do with their identity. Another aspect of these laws is that if they run these radio ads, they're going to have to devote approximately 20% of the radio ad to a disclaimer that eats into the time when they could be getting their message out to the public. So I guess the point is if somebody wanted to drop $5 million, Everyone has a right to get their message out to the public, and the public, if it doesn't trust anonymous political messages, has the right to ignore those messages. I, I'm, can you repeat your question, please? Mr. Stublin, if I remember correctly, he was at a, I, I met him before at a Rick Scott event mm -hmm. prior to the primary. He was a founder of the Tea Party in the Charlotte County area. I'm just asking how, how it is that you know someone who's the Tea Party in that area got hooked up with you all on this issue. Okay. When the Institute for Justice finds out about unconstitutional laws, we look for people who have been harmed by them. So we reached out to activists that we knew in the state of Florida. They got us onto a conference call and we told people about these laws and that's when Robin uh, stepped up and talked uh, and talked to us. Uh, Robin was actually also previously familiar with the Institute for Justice from our work on eminent domain. Okay, I, but then as, just as a follow-up, then I just want to make sure, is, um, is the Republican Party, is the Tea Party, or is there anybody who, who is involved in this uh, communication with you all regarding filing this lawsuit? Like, no, the individual plaintiffs in this case, while they have their own political interests, have just come together to speak about this issue, and the Institute for Justice is not affiliated with any other group. Now, now are, you, are you bringing this lawsuit in, in wake of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling last year on corporate uh, speech? Mm -hmm. Is that something that you are like using as your as a basis for this lawsuit? That Florida's law is, is, is unconstitutional in light of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling. The U.S. Supreme Court's ruling certainly made it clearer that Florida's law was unconstitutional. In Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission, the Supreme Court held that laws like the ones we're challenging are too burdensome for corporations and unions to have to comply with. So General Motors and the AFL-CIO aren't forced to speak through a political committee, but our clients, ordinary Americans, are. That's unconstitutional. I have a question, Mr. Worley. Uh, what exactly did you want to say in your radio ad, generally, about America? I don't mind opening that up to uh, uh, some other questions, but we want to get across that uh, is we just really feel like it's it's uh, for or against it. Uh, we'd like to speak out against it, uh, but even if you're for it, you still have the same restrictions. If it were to pass and these amendments were to go to ballot, we would be in the same position we are here today, where you would have to get the citizens to. Uh, form some type of pack in order to uh, talk about land amendments that are, that are on there is the way we see it. So I, I don't I don't want to see the Florida go down the tubes and I really think it would. And, and your ad that you want to put on is, uh, is a product of what you're just you and your neighbors? Or yes sir, uh, myself and, and Pat Wayman here we were talking about it uh, first and we we're trying to figure out how to do it and, and John's uh, a little more crafty and 
and, and far as writing and all, um, we're, we're just average uh, people down there. So I don't know how to get involved with this, some of this stuff. And, and that's where we had reached out to eventually to talk to Robin and got on some conference calls and realized there was restrictions. So it, it kind of branched off from there. But your, your story is that once you try to put up the ad, you try to get one together, it's you not realize as, you had to do this regulatory. Yes, sir. It's not a, just a simple go down there and do that. And the alternative to that is to knock on doors or, or fund it all yourself. You know, those those are the alternatives. So. And you just wanted one what, one radio ad? Or just yeah, just an ad in the in the area. It, that area down there has been hit real hard uh, from the construction boom where it dropped off, and it's already hit hard. And I've seen a lot of businesses close and a lot of people lose their jobs and move out of the state. And we're just trying to figure out um, what's the best way to to try to stop that, or at least postpone it for, for a better time. Who ultimately have the telephone number for the Institute uh, that, of That's where we picked up on the conference call, and, and I think we, um, I don't know that I got hold of them, I think it was by email that we originally made first contact. They contacted you? Uh, no, I think, think, think we contacted them. We talked on the phone a little bit and, and um, found who, out that... Who knew to call? Oh, no, we, we were on a conference call uh, with Freedom Works and... and um, uh, 912 project. Um, How did that happen? Oh, that's that's a regular conference call that that we get on on. So. Yeah. You, you have a certain amount of political sophistication here to know that. No, no, sir. Not well, no. It's not like a complete innocent if you're on a regular conference call. Oh, oh no, that's how that's how we're learning. I don't know anything about, and this is the whole process of trying to figure out how how to do this and and how not to. A year ago, I was totally uninvolved. And, and now it's getting to the point where, okay. where I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what to do and, and how to do it and how it all works. So does that mean you've been involved in some of the uh, other Tea Party activities down there? And, and no, the, sir. In the last year, no? No, I, the 912 project is different than the Tea Party, right. and, and I am a part of that. And I try to do what I can to educate others I as I learn. A, a lot of dust up about an industrial park and things like that. When I was down there, so I think oh, I haven't heard anything about industrial park. You know, a lot of the... Uh, ruling Republicans in the state talked about the need for transparency in uh, local advertising. I would suggest that you don't think that's a need to you, you can run ads under, under any kind of... In, uh, in political advertisement? Yeah. I, I think the average citizen that wants to get together and talk, uh, they ought to be able to get together and talk. And and why $500? You know, why, why not uh, well, a no minimum or, or a higher minimum? Well, I was going to ask Mr. Sherman whether or not... Mm -hmm. He thought that there, if there was a higher threshold, that would make it more constitutionally, uh, or less constitutionally firm, in his opinion, if you had a higher threshold for registration and, and filing the paperwork, or, or if you just think on 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 surface, just mm -hmm. an absolute restriction on any on any regulation. Well, Florida's laws are particularly onerous because the threshold for registration is so low, and also because, unlike most states, Florida has no lower threshold for the size of contributions and expenditures you have to report. So if you make only a $1 expenditure or receive only a $1 contribution, you have to report the name and address of the person who made that exp who, to whom you made that expenditure or received that contribution to the state. But so as a... Under Florida law, once you are anticipate you will spend more than $500, you have to register. Now, that can be the cost of a single newspaper ad. If our clients wanted to take out a full-page ad in the local section of the Tampa Tribune, that would put them over the limit. As it is, they've pledged $150 each to buy 25 radio spots on local talk radio, and that puts them over the limit. Are there any additional questions? Are you asking, uh, this is just a procedural question, I, I saw in, uh, got a copy of your complaint, uh, and I saw that you, that you planned to ask for a preliminary uh, injunction. I, what I did not know is, what, are you, are you going to do a motion to expedite to try to get this taken out prior to the, to the election? We will, absolutely. If our clients don't have the, the opportunity to speak before November 2nd, their right to speak in the 2010 election will be lost forever. So we intend to ask the court for an expedited hearing on our motion for preliminary injunction so that our clients will have the opportunity to make their voices heard. Okay. A ruling in your favor would go beyond 
the limits of this campaign itself beyond what was before? We're asking the court not just to enjoin the law as to our clients, but to everyone, so that all groups of citizens in Florida can get together and speak freely about ballot issues. Right. Well, thank you all very much for coming. Uh, we have some press packets with information about the case, including copies of the complaint and the research report that we just released. And I'm happy to answer any more questions on an individual basis, as are the clients. Thank you.